You are listening to Vamo Radio. Hey, you guys. This is your host of Vamo Radio, Vanessa Morgan. And I'm here with the lovely Aviva Reimer. Hi, Aviva. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm great. I'm so glad to have you here today. You know, you wrote this amazing, I mean, amazing book. It's just phenomenal. Becoming the Total Package. I mean, what else? What other better title could you think of? Like, that is just amazing. I feel like... This book gives so much insight to so many women, so many people in relationships, period. Women, men, just anyone who really wants to know exactly all the questions that we need answered, like seriously. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. That's right. I think it's awesome. Everybody wants the total package, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, let's get started. So, Aviva, tell me, um, tell me what are women looking for, like now? nowadays that's after marriage or after a relationship what are they looking for oh my okay i'm gonna now would you i assume you would want me to be a a straight shooter in this and (laughs) and just give you the real the real deal right (laughs) sometimes you know people would prefer for you to be politically correct I usually go straight and I and I say the truth and I really say the way it is Mm -hmm. um so, you know, first of all, it's really not easy uh, coming out of relationships. And that was, you know, primarily one of the reasons I wanted to have an area in my book about relationships and, and rules of engagement, uh, you know, um, what you're supposed to do in relationships when you're actually happily with someone. Mm-hmm. But when you're coming out of something uh, for women, uh, the first thing that they really need is, for the most part, attention. Yeah. And um, in this day and age, there's a lot of, uh, as much as men are looking for younger women, yeah. now women are also are very open to younger men. Ooh, wow. So, mm-hmm. firstly, <laughs> firstly, they may want to have some fun and some adventure because they've probably been suffering a little bit through some hard times mm-hmm. and... You know, the whole process of coming out of relationships is not easy. And they need something positive. They need something fun, something fresh, right? Something yeah. distractive. And that's usually that's usually some, you know, nice attention from men. Maybe they haven't been receiving in their relationship. So some courtship, some fun times. Yeah. And, you know, at times it's not necessarily heavy either. So I would probably just say fun. Fun yeah. and adventure. Mm-hmm. Um Someone maybe with someone who is uh, potentially younger and resilient. <clears throat> you know these. Yeah. The, these these days, women are starting to open up the idea, uh, open up to the idea of dating a younger man, just as mm-hmm. much as men are. So, yeah. um, I think that, that's what they're looking for. And mm-hmm. you know, this is this is something that now. Um, opens other doors for them it feels good for them right it's nice to get attention it feels good to women because it builds their confidence it makes them feel alive again and and the desired again after a relationship that was taken for granted wow someone fun and positive you know once they get this desire fulfilled uh or maybe out of their system so to speak they come to realize that of course once again they need some more substance and they're open opening that door again so however it would be to someone who won't let the past dictate their future either Mm -hmm. so you know i'm sure that their wants and needs will change once that happens (laughs) (laughs) definitely you know i think that's some really good information because i believe um now in the world people still believe that only men are the ones who want younger you know younger women women we we do look at younger men as well you know i have to say from my own experience i do as well you know i mean i'm not married at the Mm -hmm. moment but yeah, we do. So, you right. know, I mean, that's something that men really need to understand as well. So it's not like, you know, it's definitely one-sided or they think that um, I'll just do what I want to do and she's always going to want me. And, you know, we have wants and needs too. So <laughs> just mm-hmm. be very aware. <laughs> exactly. And and younger men are very open to, I would have to say, you know, if someone was to have fun mm-hmm. uh, before they commit, um, younger men are looking for older women. They they have their reasons as well. Mm-hmm. You know, they uh, mature mature women. I'm I'm saying you know women over 
let's say 40, right? Uh -huh. Maybe they've had some long-term relationships or marriage or kids are coming out of something the long-term, um, you know, they're, they know what they want. Yeah. Um, they're not too much into drama, you know, they're, they, they're like a fun thing for younger men. So they, they, I find that they're, they're always attempting to try to make something happen with mature women. Plus they like mm -hmm. the experience they get. <laughs> but, yes, right. <laughs> mature women as well i mean there's there's all kinds of things you know um yeah so it, it all really depends who you are where you're coming from yeah. what you want to experience and uh before you you know find someone that you might want to settle down with again right yeah definitely yeah so tell me um if you would tell me what are three things that you feel will impress a woman <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's there's a lot of things I can impress a woman, but mm -hmm. I I would probably have to say that chivalry mm -hmm. is the number one thing because these days um, a lot of gentlemen are forgetting how to court. Um, they don't feel like they have to do the work anymore. Yeah. So you know, therefore, women are starting to give more and not get what they need back. So. I would have to say chivalry is definitely um, one of the major, major things that women are really impressed by. They they like to see that a man was taught right, that he hasn't given that up. Mm -hmm. um, acts of kindness um, is really acknowledgeable for women. Um, they like someone who is detailed and they, they think about those little things or they might get you a little gift or bring you a little card you know, really chivalrous with, um, you know, uh, acts of kindness, right? Yeah. So definitely. that really makes an impression on a woman. You know, we, we don't, we, we're very, uh, we're very attracted to men based on how we're treated. So this is, this is also very important. Um, and, you know, men who are detailed, uh, yeah. someone who knows how to take control is also really, really nice to see. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And there's one more that's really, really key. You know, a man that's not afraid to show his emotion, expression, or vulnerability, mm -hmm. I yeah. swear that seals the deal for a woman because yeah. we're emotional creatures, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, it, it, when you hear a man say, you know, I, I've developed feelings for you and it's scaring me a little bit. Um, and I wanted to share that with you because I, I really want this, you know, someone who's expressive, um, uh, and vulnerable is a beautiful thing for a woman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like, um, and it could be a beautiful thing. I'm sorry. It could oh, be a ahead. beautiful thing for a man too, because he will see that if he's with the right woman, if he's vulnerable with her, it, it's going to be received and reciprocated so well that it's only going to be a, a reassuring thing for him as well. Oh, so it's yeah. a win-win. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, I feel like everyone needs that. Right. Have someone who has that same, can share that emotion or share that feeling with you. It's very generous. I feel it's very, you know, loving to the other, even if it's men or women. Absolutely. You know, they definitely can feel that. You know, if it's, you even share the same emotion with me, it's like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it shows that you have a strong emotional IQ, and yeah. it shows that you're willing to take, take charge and and not allow the fears to overwhelm you and keep you from something that's going to make you happy. Definitely, definitely. So, right. like, mm -hmm. why do you feel that people stay in unhealthy relationships? You know, even though people know, they realize. I know sometimes people don't realize, but the people when when they do realize it, why do you think they still stay in those mm -hmm. unhealthy relationships? Oh wow. Um, well. I think uh, one of the number one things I think is definitely uh, fears of the unknown, um, and you know you don't you you've been somewhere for such a long time you're you're not sure of what's on the other side, mm -hmm. and uh, you're you know sometimes people have a little bit of low self esteem and maybe they've gotten comfortable in their relationships and. Yeah. You know, they, they don't feel attractive anymore. They're, they don't feel that they will find someone again. Yeah. Um, you know, and that can also seep into, 
you know, or come from relationships that are abusive as well, which are very, very difficult for people to sometimes leave, right? Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's a whole, I think that might be a whole different conversation, but <laughs> definitely, you know, low self-esteem, um, fears of the unknown, um, also children. Uh, a lot of people, you know, have fears of um, having a negative impact on their kids. And they will stay together until the kids are grown, basically suffering in their relationship. And um, they won't leave because of that as well. Wow. Um, and um, another reason is, you know, fears of what they have to endure or the upheaval of separating everything they build and potentially losing it. Uh, so definitely for financial reasons. Um and having to go through all of that. That's why in my book, I, I strongly suggest, you know, I, I give a lot of tools and I provide a lot of tools in the book uh, for people to get the perspective they need in order so that they can handle things uh, accordingly. And, you know, I give them a perspective that might be an answer. Um, and that is to be positive and, you know, do the best you can and, and um, try to do things amicably and with love and um, face your fears. Definitely. Um, yeah, so, and children is really big too. Yeah, yeah, especially the children. You know what, uh, Aviva, from what's, right. already, from what's already been said, I can already tell that you're very, very knowledgeable about emotions, especially from a woman's point of view and being able to express that, especially. Mm -hmm you actually creating this book and being able to express that with everyone. I know you're very knowledgeable about this. Yeah. So I would like to really know, like, how do you yeah. feel about the Me Too movement? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, you know, this world is big enough to have all the negative and all the positive, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, some of that negative um, happens. You know, there are definitely people out there who will cross certain boundaries, who will, um, you know, put somebody in an un unpredictable um, situation uh, and a compromised situation. And, of course, we know who those people are, right? Yeah. They, they're, yeah. Out, they're definitely out there. Um, in the book, I call them wolves or <laughs> wolves in sheep's clothing. So you have to, you know. Yeah. And... Um, Unfortunately, you know, uh, women in this case, because of the Me Too, Me Too movement, mm -hmm. um, have put themselves in certain situations that could have been misinterpreted and, and certain things happened. Uh, mm -hmm. And there could have been men who are just really aggressive and arrogant and think they can have whatever they can have and they abuse women. Yeah. But at the end, at the end of the day, here, here are my thoughts. I, I actually feel, you know... Sorry for the men. I feel sorry for men. Um, mm -hmm. I don't feel sorry for the men that that create you know created the crime. Mm -hmm. um, that you know that did this. They should definitely be reprimanded for their actions. Um, and you know the women need to do some healing for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm right. Um, but I feel bad because there are so many men out there who are now terrified terrified to say or do things that could be so misinterpreted that mm -hmm. and or maybe they wouldn't be misinterpreted but the fear has now been put into men that it could be and it all it's going to do now is just create a complete break an even bigger breakdown than what social media and technology is already doing out yeah. there and just add add to the problem. Now they're not going to want to, you know, pursue as much. They're not going to want to do or say certain things or open any kind of doors or possibilities because it could be misconstrued. Um, and they're very, very fearful of that. So I actually feel bad for men that, you know, they're, they're having to deal with this now because it, it, it is affecting them in a really big way because I speak with men all the time. Yeah. And they're ter they're terrified. They 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 don't want to do anything anymore. And it's tough for women because women like to be courted. Women like to be approached. 
you know, we like to be wooed. Mm -hmm. Definitely. (laughs) And, right. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to make it very, very difficult out there. And it's really too bad. And I feel bad that they have to deal with this because there's some really, really great men out there who would not ever compromise a woman that are fearful. Yeah. You know, I I feel the same way. You know, I think, um, actually, I feel like some of them, I won't mention any names or any of the uh, specifics, but... I do feel like some mm-hmm. of the situations going on with the Me Too movement, I feel like it's gotten a little out of hand where it's um, kind of escalated so far where people have um, been imprisoned for it and for some things that may, mm-hmm. again, like you said, been misconstrued. You know, maybe it wasn't even a, an actual harassment. It was just an, an accident. I bumped into you. I did this or something, but I did not mean to, which is why they did mm-hmm. not acknowledge it. And you know, it just escalates to something that doesn't even make sense to them. So they're like, what did I do? Or now they, like you said, they fear touching a woman. They fear being even around a woman, you know? So that's, that's really that's scary right. thing. That's, that's really right. Scary. They're going to be very, very scared to even, you know, put a hand on a person. I mean, people have different personalities. For example, I myself, I'm a very warm and fuzzy person. Aww. And when I'm with someone, I might put my hand, my hand on their shoulder. Yeah. Okay. Or on their back, um, or on their hand, or on their elbow, or what have you, right? Yeah. And you can feel that, you know, I have a good heart, I'm a warm person, and that's all part of, like, human contact that is healthy. Right. You know, now men are not, men are not going to do that. Oh, yeah, definitely. They're not going to do men that are not gonna, Men are not going to take that risk. They're afraid. They're and afraid it's, to. And it's, yeah, they're, they're going to be afraid, yeah. Man. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's too bad. It's yeah. really too bad. It really is. You know what? Um, actually, Aviva, I want you to tell me because you know we've been talking about different kinds of relationships and um, things that you mm-hmm. encounter between either man, male or female, and most of them has been physical. So tell me what's going on in the tech dating world. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> well. There's a lot going on in the tech dating world, that's for sure. Online dating, all these apps that are coming out, seems like, you know, every three months there's a new app almost. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, when, you take, when you take the whole environment as a whole, it does work. You know, I have people mm-hmm. in my family who've gotten married, they met online. Oh. However, you know, what comes with that package is, is a lot of um, work. Mm-hmm. Um, diligence, diligence. You really have to be smart online. It's very time consuming. Um, and what can happen is, as much as it does work, there's so much that doesn't work. And for somebody who's vulnerable, that's coming into that sort of era of dating, uh, that might be new on the market, so to speak, or getting out of relationships, or just dating in general, there's so much that can hurt you. Yeah. Um, and discourage and discourage you uh, from that world altogether. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. You know, that will probably make me even more busier than I already am. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, what's going on there is kind of sad. You know, there's a lot of phony profiles. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You're ba- you know, you're you are basing a uh, majority of the attraction on the superficial aspect, which is the p- pictures. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it is, it's like a full-time job. Yeah. I definitely. do give some tips. I do provide tips in the book as to how to handle it. Absolutely. But you know, you, there's phony profiles there. There are men um, that are trying to get money out of women. Yeah. Um, there are, there's all kinds of, stuff on there and for you to go in there and try to cycle through all of that and and read between the lines and figure out who's honest who's not who's real who's you know who's trying to perceive themselves to be something they're not Mm -hmm. um and then on the other side also you know who are they really inside this person that you don't know right right exactly yeah and they might have some you know, limiting beliefs. Everybody has a little, uh, some limiting beliefs, right? Right. The, the 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 people that are going to, for example, and I'm not trying to promote my book, that are going to yeah. read something like this, um, are going to really start to self-reflect and and figure out instead of you know looking to others for what they may have or not have, 
you know, I, I hope they're diligent in looking at themselves first so that they know exactly what they're bringing to the table and what they need to address or deal with before they go out there and they meet someone that may or may not hurt their relationship. So if you do your part and you self-reflect and you fix whatever, you know, might be holding you back, you are more more likely to meet the right person knowing yeah. who you are because you will attract, you know, the same Right, exactly. But it's very it's very difficult out there. Absolutely, it is, especially for a younger the younger generations as well. You know, it's like a, every single experience will condition you to have less faith <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and less trust. <laughs> and yeah. that's that's not what we want. That's not what we want. You know, it's supposed to be a good experience. It's supposed to be a fun experience and fulfilling one as well. So, how do you um, maintain a healthy relationship? Um, are you asking me personally or, or what you asked me, what is important in, in maintaining a healthy relationship for others? Well, first for others, and then I want to know you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, one of the most important things, um, in my belief is that you have to have your own life outside of your relationship. Yeah. Okay. You have, you know, as, as much as we want to have um, interests that we both enjoy, um, things that we love to do together, the commonalities, uh, et cetera, things in common, you know, same background, what have you. It's also good to have a life of your own with friends and, and others that, you know, that you can bring into your relationship and discuss or share. Yeah. You okay. You don't have to have you know, everything in common. And it's important because it keeps you, you're an individual before you meet anyone. And there's so many relationships out there who, you know, uh, they get together, they get married and they get settled into their ways and they forget all about their lives. They, they're not spending time with their friends anymore. They're not mm-hmm. seeing family as much anymore. They're not doing the things that they used to love anymore because they start to mirror themselves and, and, um, you know, become an extension of their partner versus their own person. Yeah. So I think it's really, yeah, I think it's a really healthy thing to, you know, have a life of your own, go on vacation with friends, do things that you love, and then share that with your partner and respect each other for the things that you have in common and the things that you don't have in common. Definitely. Definitely. it, It should be a nice balance, you know. And another one that's really important is, I think everybody needs to maintain themselves and look good and take care of themselves, you know, for themselves and for, and for the partner, obviously, (laughs) because when you're, when you're attracted to somebody, you love the way they look, you love the way they walk, they talk. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely like, and then you get comfortable. Yeah, definitely. And then what? That's right. I mean, then you gain 30, 40 pounds, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, your chemistry starts to decline a little bit. I mean, we're all animalistic beings, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you have to be able to feel sexy. You have to be able to feel it to be able to have it affect that other person. Right. You know, yeah. you know how they say, you know, uh, you can have a lot more fun once you lose, you know, 40 pounds, <laughs> so to speak. And, yeah. And, and, and. and Right. And what about what about the health aspect? You know, that's that's also a really, really key as well. Mm-hmm. If you're not healthy. Right. You yeah. know, like Dr. Oz always talks about your biological age and your uh, physical age. So you can be 35, but you can be 55. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but right. And and, you know, that's not what you want. <laughs> that's not what you want. You want to stay as young as you possibly can all the way around so that you have a great life, great relationship and make that last as long as you can. Right. So it's important to take care of yourself and take care of yourself for yourself and for your partner. I mean, that's what we all start with. Why should we change that? You know, just because we're married for 10 years. Right. Those are the relationships that will last a lifetime. Definitely. You know, I think it's really important to always say, physically and mentally healthy that's very very important psychologically healthy as well you know that's 
a huge that's factor. Right. That's a huge factor. Sometimes that does break up a lot of relationships and marriages, you know, losing yourself and losing who you are and keeping yourself together. Exactly. So, yeah, definitely. That's right. I mean, this is how you keep your love alive. Yeah. And the romance alive, right? Exactly. Yeah, definitely. So, actually, as we The got... romance is never going to die. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're always sexy. You're right? always, you know, <laughs> feeling great and, and oozing that energy. Yeah, That's, that's definitely. important. Definitely. You know, Viva, I want to know exactly how do you maintain a healthy relationship? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I try to uh, I try to practice what I preach. <laughs> <laughs> I heard so, that. That's that's what I do. I practice what I preach, and um, you know, I also like to uh, like I'm a I'm a planner. I like to have fun. I like to laugh. You know, you got to have a good balance. I like to travel. You know, I get really busy sometimes, and I have my really really busy moments, and then I'll make sure that I allocate some some time to spend with the people that are important to me that my, my partner my you know my daughters even though they're grown mm -hmm. um working out is a really big part of my life um so that definitely keeps me sharp mentally and emotionally and physically and that keeps me going so and then I share that with the people that I carry care about the most and um I just I try to have a nice balance Oh, right? that's nice. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Downtime. You know what they say, yeah. you know, play hard. No, work hard, play hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'm glad that you actually was able to find your own balance and to be able to do things that you love and still be able to keep and maintain a healthy relationship with not only a lover, but yes. also with family and other people around you. So that's awesome. Especially we spread off a lot of positive that's energy. That's right. So that's awesome. That is it's awesome. a choice. It's a, it's a choice, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's a choice. I know there's a lot of people out there who struggle. They have certain situations. But, you know, you might not be able to change your situation in a day, in a week, in a month. But if you put a plan together, you can, cha you can change it. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. You can take those little baby steps and you can get to where you need to go. And that's exactly what I provide in this book. Definitely. So for those of us who are as interested as I am, <laughs> where can we find your book? Uh -huh. um, you can find it on Amazon. Um, you can find it on my website, which is uh, www.avivarimer.com. Um, and actually, um, I'm not sure when this is going to air, but uh, Friday, this Friday, uh, for 24 hours, it will be available on Amazon for $1. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. The, Definitely. Yes, the digital copy will be available for $1 uh, because I I want this to spread like wildfire and I want to help people and um, I want people to change their lives and, and to be happy so that, you know, when, they, when their time comes, they can say, you know what, I had no regrets. I, right. I, I did great. I changed my life. I did what I had to do. And... I, I did it right. Definitely. That is awesome. You know what, Aviva, I really appreciate you having having you on Vamo Radio today. You know, I feel like you've given us so much information that everyone can use. Thank you. That we all can use. I really appreciate mm -hmm. you. And actually, where can we stay connected with you on social media? Um, I'm uh, Aviva Reimer on Facebook, on Instagram. It's all under my name, Aviva Reimer. Um, of course, my website Perfect Fit is my introduction firm. Um, I'm international. Um, and, you know, Kindle, Amazon, all you need to do is Google my name and you'll find me everywhere, I think. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. You guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. This has been Aviva Reimer. Again, you guys, her book is available until Friday for $1. You've got to get it. Trust me, it will definitely be worth it. <laughs> and, again, you guys, you can listen to this interview by visiting vamo radiocom and it'll also be posted on my brand new YouTube channel. Thanks so much, Aviva. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say it's not until Friday. Like, the book is there always. But on this coming Friday, mm -hmm. it will be available for $1. Awesome. You guys, make sure you get that book yeah. as soon as you can. And if you can't make the deadline for $1, it's okay. It'll still be available.